Hi guys, welcome to yet another episode of Talk and Moments with a little bit of spice. I do have various famous friends who stop by from, you know, some time to time and some not so famous people as well but we like to gist about things that people talk about topical issues situationships things that are wiling out on the streets of social media and so much more today one of my famous friends is here he's a record label boss turned lifestyle corner so what would i say lifestyle kind of lifestyle blogger as well he's been around he's been in this music business for quite a while ladies and gentlemen i will be chopping it up today with ubi franklin ubi franklin politician businessman to the government of course uh, no, tourism so it's the same environment so. yes please like just toot your horn i also know that you're also like a real estate person as yeah, well so I have you have houses as well so we have to we have to hustle you have your hands in so many things man yeah man you know how it is man we'll be franklin absolutely love you we go way back you know, right? people don't even understand how way back we go and sometimes we just sit on the phone and just have word conversation which is why i had to have you on this show I because just cry and, and know, crack clean our tears talk about everything we've been through it all ubi you know just different stages and phases really we've been planning this interview for so long because i jumped on your live one time and i know a lot of people learned so much yeah. reached out to me and yeah. talked about how we had such an impactful conversation yeah. uh, with you the conversation just never ends you know i say to people just like you think about the seven stages of grief there is also seven stages of divorce and i think that people don't talk about divorce there's this stigma that already comes from it and people are always very quick to just shy away from speaking about it yeah. i personally feel like you know it's nobody gets married in the hope of getting a divorce yeah. but Other things happen. happen so at what point did you know that this was inevitable because in my situation i kind of did not know i I woke up in the middle of the storm like literally I didn't have a moment to be like let me recover it was like boom the press boom this is happening and that that so was this that is what people don't know right my marriage actually had been shaky from the time of engagement mm. when I engaged um, mm. her my marriage had been shaky from then and then that's why some people always say you know what you shouldn't have gone ahead with the marriage at all but when I think about it I'm like no I made the right decision because now my son is very important to me. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So everything that happened, I always, I always, when I want to feel sad, I show it out. Yeah. I, I believe that my son is really it's important. Worth it. That is the reason why God made that happen. You yeah. Know? So you see, marriage is very important. Mm. People don't understand this thing. Mm. You know, social media is trying to change the narrative about oh, marriage is not important. Marriage is very, very, very important. Mm. Right. I was reading something today before I got here, um, where one lady was saying that until she got married, mm. that's when people started respecting her. Now, the reason why people see marriage as if there's a problem is we've lost time having conversations. Mm. Now, you know, watch this. Go out for dinner anywhere. Everybody's on their phone. Mm. Dinner is meant for you to look at your environment, mm. you know, reminisce on things, talk about trips, talk about stuff. But people have lost that. So do you feel like people don't communicate with each other people more? Don't no more? Do you really think that's what the because problem is? Because a lot is? of people are, are scared from the beginning of relationship mm. to let the other person know about them. From a woman's perspective, so I think we'll do this, you know, you can share a man's perspective, I'll share a woman's, and I don't know it all. Yeah. Um, but I do know that, you know, it takes two for a divorce to happen. Yeah. Now, this is not Ubi and Toke talking about who they divorced. This yeah. is talking about our growth yeah. from that situation. Yeah. I got divorced at a time where I never thought divorce would happen to me. No. Divorce was what happened to other people. Yeah. You heard about aunties growing up who had a divorce, and you just sit down and think, how does somebody divorce? Why do you, why are you getting married if they don't know each other? Like, why are you doing it? Because you just don't it's realize that a broken glass can actually cause a divorce. Yeah. It's not the things that people think. It's not the obvious. It's not the cheating. It's not the lying. It's not this. It's fundamentally, in my opinion, I feel sometimes people's ideals are different. Even before you get to communicate, people are just from two different worlds. And it's like night and day. Let me paint it this way. If you look at what is going on now, Social media is the worst thing that has happened to this world. Let's not blame it on an app. No, let, let me let me say this. 
Social media is the worst thing that's happened to this world and it's also the best thing that's happened to the world. Okay. So it depends on how you use it. Okay. Now, I know a friend that I've been begging to join social media and he finally joined, right? He deleted the app. He, he deleted it, he said it's done. Now, because it was affecting his own personal relationship with himself mm. first. He said he has gotten to a point where he wakes up this morning he wakes up every morning. Normal, his normal routine is pray, walk out, you know, then go downstairs, check what his chef has, or maybe if his fiance is around, they talk. But once he joined Instagram, that two months of being on Instagram, it, it made him feel like he was seeing too many things that were trying to take him away from what his his personal goal is, which is his girlfriend and what, where he wants them to be. You mm, understand? Mm. So those things, so he deleted the app, mm. and he told me that this is the, the this is the most peace he's had in the last two months. Mm. Now, in twenty sixteen, no, in twenty seventeen, I tried that. Twenty sixteen or twenty seventeen, I tried that. I left Instagram for two months. It was the best peace ever. Really? Trust me. Try this. Log out of social media. Two months. You find out that you're not missing anything. People will still be telling you what is going on. Like it's best you are hearing it as gist mm -hmm, than you're right? seeing it. Than you seeing it, and that gist will be just they'll be telling you. So you'll be trying to picture out what is going on. Mm. You will not get the true picture, but if you're on social media, you see it. Mm. So that's why I always tell people: so no matter how this is, always find time to log out of social media and focus. Now, looking at divorce, you see, social media is also the place where people try to make themselves look like king, uh, like saints that mm. nothing happens to them. Mm. A lot of these people that troll. Most of us that are divorced on social media, their parents are divorced. A lot of Boom. A lot no, a lot of these people that troll us on social media, um, their mothers are married to new guys. You understand? Their pa fathers are married to new women. Mm. You know It's like you shaming someone for marrying a married exactly. man, but your mother is like the second or third wife. Do you understand? It's like, saying? dude. So when I look at those things, I always I always I always I'm always very consoled that one lady was always abusing me, saying things, she always post things on social media. So a few days ago, I met her um, with a friend. So I got into the place. I saw her. I looked at my friend. I went to say hi to my friend. And then I called my friend. I said, you know this lady? She said, yeah, that, that's my babe. I said, you know what? God is doing my work. You know why? My friend is married. The lady is always saying that she's not She's not going to be with him. Uh, uh, this thing, that all this. She said, she's one of those guys mm, that are always on social media. Like, yeah. She doesn't know that that guy is married. Wow. So do you understand? So now, I ask the guy, does she know you're married? He said, mm, she does, he doesn't think so. So he doesn't think so, meaning he has not told her. Mm -hmm. So now she has gone into the same part mm. that she's always abusing Yeah, But well, we've always known that people are better judges when it's, it's other people just, yeah. and they're, they're the greatest advocates when it's their situation. Yeah. They make excuses for why certain things are happening to them. The conversation is, mm. if I post something about you on the, on, the, on my Instagram, mm. right? You don't feel comfortable with it. But if it's another person's gist, you want to go to the comments and you're, you're reading the comments, you mm. want to see how yeah. exciting it is that yeah. people are saying about life. another person. Mm. So, and that's how life is generally. Mm. Okay, so let's talk about the seven stages of Divorce. I think like there's seven stages of grief that people go through because divorce is like death. Something is dying. Let's be honest. You know, a part of you that you shared with someone is dying. So in your own experience, what was your seven stages? What were they like? Uh, what, what was, was the was first emotion you felt? So first was, oh, is this happening? Right? Really? Is this happening? And... You know, you, you hear divorce, right? You know, I think until it happens to you, that's when you will be more aware of the topic, mm -hmm. right? So, I was coming from America. Um, so I left where my where my son was. I went to New York, and then everybody was congratulating me. Oh, congratulations, congratulations! But the back of my head, I knew that there was there were problems. So I got into my hotel of my apartment, because I love staying in apartments. I go into my apartment and I looked at myself in the mirror. So the, the news of when I'm getting, we're getting, I want a divorce, happened maybe like on a Monday. No, let's say on, on a Wednesday, and then there was a concert in New York. So I left Arizona to New York. 
So in those two days, two, three days, I lost so much weight. Wow. And when I was in America waiting for my son to come, I was always going to the gym with my brother-in-law. And I was always in the gym. It was like therapy. So, so, so I, I, then this had not happened. I mm. was, nothing like that has happened. So everything was still cool. So I had, you know, you could see if I, if I, if I, look, I mm. was buffed up. So I didn't know what was going on. So when I got to New York, I got into my apartment. So lucky there was a mirror. So I walked straight into the mirror. Like I looked at myself. I saw that something had changed. You know, my face looked like someone who is, who, who is coming out from out of suffering because now there were different emotions that were coming. So if you are not popular, right, the emotions that will come is maybe it's family and friends that will talk about it. Mm. But if you're popular is how is this going to be broken out on the internet? I've always wondered why do we think that being famous makes it worse? Because I think divorce is divorce. Because being famous have more voices mm, thinking the they knew what happened the conversation yeah proceed pressure grows in silence mm. right see and i tell people the reason why a lot of people are depressed today is because of pressure mm. so i've been there and i tell you pressure grows in silence once you're quiet and you're not speaking it becomes a problem mm. now that's why in, when you're going through a divorce, you need to find trusted people who will tell you one, the truth. So for me, my emotions were anger, mm -hmm. um, denial, um, um, blaming. I was blaming, mm. I was blaming other people yeah. for, for my situation. Mm. Um, uh, what again? Did you go through numbness where you were just numb? A period so, of still. So yeah, just I went, stillness. I went numbness where mm. I'll, I'll just be quiet. <laughs> me too. I'll just be me quiet too. In situation. Let me tell you what a friend of mine was going through a divorce. Was getting ready to go to work at seven fifteen in the morning. Was doing his time. Was sat in front of the TV and didn't move till eight pm that night. A lot of people live in denial. I I was living in denial. Nobody should ever build their marriages feeling like there's somebody who can come in and speak into the situation mm. and make it happen, right? Never thought about it so like that. So I had that as well. Mm. So, so it felt, gives you false hope. It gives you false hope. It gives you false hope and it puts people in more important situations for you mm. than you actually are. And then if you are the woman in that situation, it makes the guy feel like you are not, you are not, you, you are not you, you you don't take decisions for yourself mm. then if you are the man the woman makes it feel, you you make the woman feel like you are someone that can cannot be you will not be able in the future you're weak you, basically you're weak mm. so now that happened to me because i had people a lot of people that were involved mm. in one way or the other and then i felt like so let me tell you one of the one of the most defining moments was up to was i went to one of these guys and I went to his house one day. So he called me and he said, come, I have good news for you. I thought that- Your oh, marriage was finally- We're gonna fix everything. I was, because, so I just got there. I wanted to get into his house. I, I drove in to his house. I don't really normally drive into his house. So that drive into it, I felt like he was to come. Maybe she was there, I just put her in the car and go. And then I got in. The car. He came out of his house. He said, Today should be the last day you come to my house. Like, you know, you know when you're when you go from mm -hmm. excited on dread to sad. Yeah. I thought he was joking. He said, Today should be the first, the first and last day you come to my house with this topic. And I'll tell you this: go out there, make money, be successful, and move on with your life. What's this guy saying? See, I drove my car from the mainland to the island. I got into my house. I got to my room. I stayed in my house one week. I didn't step out of my door. Wow, that is rough. Because you see, for me, that was all I needed. To hear. To hear. Mm to actually snap me back into. Mm. So that one week I stayed at home and I didn't come out was 
was a mixture of anger, uh. deceit, uh. you know, a lot of things were just going on. Going through your mind, Please yeah. I calm down. All right, thank you so much, Ubi. This is, I mean, so it's like therapy. Just even chatting about these yeah. things, we live in the past so where we are, and looking forward to the future. You know, I hope someone learns something from it. I mean, uh, standard. I hope so too. I'm always rooting for you, and I can't wait. Boom! All right, guys, you've heard it from the horse's mouth himself. That was be Franklin sharing some life lessons with us. Hope you guys tune in again on the next episode of Talk at Moment. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Twitter. I am a toaster with a double R. Goodbye. <laughs>